in Mali. Dozens more were hurt in the apparent car bombing in Gao on Sunday, including four soldiers. It was the second attack in Mali Sunday after four more were killed when vehicles belonging to an armed group of former Tuareg rebels hit a landmine. And three days before that, a suicide bomber hit the Mali headquarters of the Five Nation military force known as G5 Sahel. That, of course, has added concerns about how it can tackle the jihadist groups roaming the region. We'll just talk more about this with me now. I'm joined on the set by France 24's expert on terrorist movement, Wasim Nasr. Wasim, these attacks that I listed are just the latest in a series of attacks that we've seen there in Mali since mm. the beginning of the year. Yes, of course. We have attacks on daily basis today, either against the Malian army or against the forces of uh, the MINUSMA, the United Nations forces, or the French army. And uh, it goes back It goes back even to uh, the first attack of this kind, attacking a military French, French military convoy, goes back to January 17th of January 2017, also in Gao, another attack of the same kind was the 11th of January, January 2018, where uh, three soldiers were uh, were wounded uh, through an attack. And here we are seeing a map of the attacks since last uh, since January 2017. So since a year uh, a year and a half, and we see all the yellow dots are where attacks occurred. So the most important attacks at least uh, at least uh, occurred. Today we know that uh, France has been engaged there since five years and a half. Today France has more than 4,000 soldiers on the Sahel, on the Sahel region. And uh, we have France also lost 22 soldiers on the operations there. Uh, and of them, 17 who were uh, killed in hostile attacks because others were killed in like kind of uh, cough of uh, accidents. And the latest, uh, the two latest uh, uh, military killed were back in February, uh, where also a colonel of the army was also uh, wounded, uh, wounded uh, severely. And what's new today, and even we should, that wasn't common in this region, is suicide attacks with kamikaze uh, uh, jihadis driving uh, cars full uh, with explosives. So today, we see that this is a kind of modus operandi that is uh, being uh, getting into the normal as a modus operandi in Mali or in the Sahara region, which wasn't the case till uh, till maybe uh, a year uh, a year ago, and this goes because uh, today we see that many uh, groups in the Sahel are uh, creating coalitions in order to attack uh, especially uh, the French army, knowing that today there's the uh, meeting in Waukshot, and many of those attacks were like uh, attacks on anniversary dates. The anniversary of the first French operation, like uh, Serval, which goes to 11 of January 2013, uh, meetings, uh, the attacks uh, that occurred also in response to uh, French operations, for example, in the Menaka region or in northern Mali. Wasim, what more do we know about who specifically is behind these attacks? We have um, we have two main groups. Okay, we can put them under the banner of Al Qaeda and the Islamic State. The most important group is called Jamaat Nusrat Al Islam Al Muslimin, which was um, uh, composed on April 2017 with many figures like uh, Katibat Masina of uh, Muhammad Kufa and uh, Yahya Abul Humam of uh, Al Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb, Iyad Ghali from Ansardin, which is the head who is the head today of this uh, formation, and Hassan Al Ansari from Mirabitun who's the spokesperson of Bel Mukhtar. Bel Mukhtar, who was uh, said to be killed, but many sources, some of my sources are telling me that no, he is still alive, which is to be taken into consideration. And the new thing about this coalition is that they succeeded in um, in putting someone very political. Iyad Ghali is someone very political and someone very respected in the region. He's from a Tuareg uh, origin, and at one moment he was even um, like the spokesperson of the Tuareg regarding France and uh, and other countries. So they have many cards to play. Um, lately, they uh, they issued uh, they issued threats against uh, Western uh, societies operating on the Sahel region. Uh, threats that were taken seriously. Some of the French enterprises even uh, told their employees to be to leave uh, uh, for this uh, for the summer because anti-terror operation even in Ouagadougou. Uh, enabled services to collect information to uh, to confirm that those threats are really uh, to be taken seriously because many threats are being issued from time to time but this is to be taken seriously and we shouldn't forget also that this group has a French hostage 
uh, a woman, Sophie Petronin. Uh, they hold her and they want money to, to free her. And they even pushed things up to telling her son uh, to visit her and that he would be safe. And her son is now in the region. I don't know if he got to visit her or not, but I know that he's, he's in the region. So the other group is the Islamic State with two uh, small uh, subgroups. Uh, the Islamic State in Masina, who are the guys of uh, Kufa who left him, and the Islamic State of uh, uh, As-Sahrawi, who uh, vowed allegiance to the Islamic State years ago. So today they are operating mainly in southern and central central Mali, with some links also further, uh, further south. And uh, they don't have any conflict with Al-Qaeda as in other regions. They don't collaborate, but they tolerate each other.